Yeah, pay no attention to the woman behind the curtain. <laughs> oh my goodness. Talk about glitches. <sighs> well, hello, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be using <clears throat> the Maya gouache, and I am looking forward to that. Hello, Stephen Wood. Stephen is here. Joseph is here. Audio is live. Video is live. Great. Okay. So I started, I tried to start it a little early <clears throat> and it, uh, I saw it jump to me, then it jumped back and I was like, oh, okay, well, we'll get it all worked out. Anyways, uh, that's why you saw that loading screen in the beginning. Cause I went early. So, oh, let's not pull my piercing out. That would not be good. Okay. I still have not. I'm seeing a commercial live, are you? Well, I guess that uh, you act like a regular commercial, like a YouTube commercial. Cat's Art Pick says, I'm seeing a commercial live. If that was a YouTube commercial, um, although I am not monetized yet, YouTube does have the ability to do that. <clears throat> that is definitely within their rights to do so since they want to let us share all of our videos for free. Um, yeah. So soon, hopefully soon we're getting close a little bit. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, um, it's down. It's not braided. It's not in my, you know, normal braid or braids. I just left it crazy today. And so hopefully I don't end up with wash in my hair and who knows? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes. But you know, hi Tara. The, uh, but the good part of that though, Joseph is that, you know, they don't charge us to store all of our videos on their service. So I guess if they want to show a commercial at the beginning of my video, then, and not charge me to be able to put out as much as I want, then all right, I'll trade off with that. Anyhow. All right. So this week, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. I still have not figured out what happened with my, my regular cameras. So again, we will be overhead today, which I can zoom you in and out if I need to. I just, there won't be any like side views that I have had in the past. And of course I'm looking at you up here, slightly higher on a different camera, which is crazy because none of my webcams are working, but my two Canons are, so they're the better cameras anyway. Although, you know, I could do with a, a little less high definition here, <laughs> but anyhow. Okay. So today let me, let me bring you to the desk because you know what? I did this palette. I finished re-wetting all of this gouache and mixing up and I did record it. I haven't put it into like a video cause I, I was doing it in the kitchen. So I was recording, um, hi Dylan. I was recording clips and I was going to string them together for you. And if you guys are interested in seeing like just a really brief, um, uh, short, here's how the process went. Um, drop me a comment below if you're watching this on the replay or let me know in the live chat, uh, because it'd be very easy to put that together for you. <clears throat> okay. So wait till you see this palette and how it looks now. I'm just like, it blew my mind. Um, huge shout out to Lindsay over at the frugal crafter for giving me this set of uh, the 56 Maya uh, jelly gouache. And um, telling me how to handle them, you know, to get them reconstituted. Because some of them were a little dry, but she's like, she's tried it, she knew it worked and felt confident that I would be able to do that and um, could get quite a bit of use out of them. So why not, right? So I was, yes, very, very thankful for her to have passed this on. <clears throat> okay. 
let me show you how it looks now. And I'm just gonna jump you down to the desk perhaps. Yeah, there we go. Okay, here we are. And one moment. Right. I definitely understand that, Joseph. I definitely understand that opinion there. Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Sorry. It will set, This will settle down in a second. I just like ran down the stairs and ran back up the stairs. I don't run. I was not designed for run. Cheetahs, large cats, they're designed to run. I am none of those things. <laughs> I am not designed to run. Definitely not up and down stairs. So anyhow. Okay. You ready for this? Look at this palette. So I actually like, I'm going to, right. It goes with the words this way. So I cleaned off the top two. And like I said, I recorded all of this. So if you guys are interested, just let me know. I'll throw it together and just throw it up as a bonus video. It's really, it would be really brave. <clears throat> I would be surprised. Sorry. If it was more than five, 10 minutes, like, cause you know, how much, how long is it going to take to show you free wedding gouache? <laughs> so I cleaned this up. I cleaned this whole palette up. They are like brand new. Let me just bring you in here one moment. I'm just going to zoom you in on this palette and I will move the palette, but check out that gouache let me sorry if i'm shaking you i'm just making sure that that camera focuses where it needs to <clears throat> there we go so it has been raining here today and i think it's just like washing all the pollen down look at those everything is nice and clean everything has been re-wet it is like you remember how cracked and dry these guys were it worked wonderfully so again huge shout out to Lindsay. i did also include if anybody is interested i'm just gonna put the lid back on for a moment and we're gonna bring this back out zoom you back out i may have to relocate that you guys are seeing this happening live <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, there's 56 colors in this palette and I'm just like, convenience, you want convenience colors? There are a lot of convenience colors in that palette. And I've noticed some have different, um, slightly different colors, but there's quite a few. Uh, in fact, there are two others I have linked the Maya one below, but there's also two others that are a lot more cost effective for cost effective. They're better for your wallet. And I think they're the exact same gouache. So I don't know for sure. I cannot say with certain hundred percent certainty, but I think they are. And like I said, the links are, the links are there. You can check them out. If this is something that interests you now today, and I forgot to grab a palette knife. So I'm going to be grabbing one of those real quick here in a moment. But today I'm not going to pull all, leave this open because I was noticing when I was re-wetting them that the longer that, you know, the palette's open, of course, the ones I've already worked with are starting to skim up. So for two hours, I don't want to leave this wide open. So what I'm going to do today, hi, George Pencil Art. I grabbed, again, my ceramic palette. And I'm going to put some of the colors I think I'm going to use onto this palette because then when I'm done, I can always scoop them out, put them back in here, whatever. But, oh, see, this is going to be an issue. I'm like, this is why my hair is always tied up. Either I'm shedding, it's on me, or I'm going to get paint in it. It's going to be fun. I definitely think I'm going to use this blue here, um, our white are possibly our black um this blue i'm gonna sh i'll show you what that color actually looks like it's gorgeous 
it's very dark. It is a very, very dark. Um, I think it's more like kind of like an indigo. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly the names. I have not, did not look that up. So I, I decide, oh, possibly the gray, but again, maybe the gray just to desaturate a little bit, but we'll see. So if you saw the thumbnail, you saw the picture, which I forgot to pop in here. Let me see if I can pop that in here. Hi, hobby artist. Best way. Oh, so great question. Hobby artist asked, what is the best way to take wash outside for plain air? And what's the way best way to pack it for travel? <clears throat> If you have, and I just happen to have some behind me, depends on what kind of wash you have, really. Because if you have um, gouache, like these are some of my whole buying gouache. So these little tubes, I can just, I could just, you know, take my tubes here and bring those, of course, and then just put out whatever I'm going to be using um, and do it that way. Or... They actually make a really nice plein air palette. And I am almost 100% certain that Lindsay has shared it. Um, basically, it is like square. It comes with deeper wells. Oh, it is raining. I've got pressure like in my ears. Pollen is crazy. Anyhow. It has deeper wells. It has like a rubber seal that goes over the top and then the top clamps down. I have been considering getting one of these, so you, you may see it soon. <clears throat> and then that clicks into a water container. And then you just take that with you, go out, you can do all your plein air painting. And um, that would be my best suggestion. I have not tried that yet. So I hate to say that would be my best suggestion when it's something I personally haven't tried. Um, but I am considering getting that. So what I'll do is at the end and I'm going to, okay, I knew I had like just, there it is. I just set my little pad here. What I'll do is I will grab a link to that and um, I will throw it in the description below or I'll, I'll, I'll pin a post for you. And that way there, if you come back afterwards, I'll have it pinned to the top and I'll do the plein air I'll pin it so that you have a link to go check out what I'm actually talking about. So it'll be pinned in um, at the top of the comments afterwards. I'll do that right after we're done. <clears throat> if I don't make a note for myself, forget it. Nothing happens. I will not remember. Hello, Jacqueline. Melty, but overcast Nova Scotia. Is it warm there right now? It is like, let's see. Oh, it says it's 60 here and raining. 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which, uh, yeah, you'll have to do whatever that, whatever that conversion is to Celsius for those of you who keep track of the weather in Celsius, but it's like 60 degrees here right now. So chilly, but nice. Okay. So the, the image, let me grab that real quick. If I can. And for some reason, it's not there. And of course, it's not there anymore. Just a second. Let me see if I can do it this way. Yes. And boom, there you go. So that is the reference photo. And we are going to get right into that. Excuse me. We are going to get right into that. And I am not going to be painting this exactly. <laughs> If you are wanting to paint along, let me just shrink this down for you guys. Whoa, that was not the way. I have to forgive me. I should have gone into my preview mode and done it that way there. You guys wouldn't have been subjected to all that movement. Sorry. Okay, so that is the reference photo. I am... I am not going to be um, painting this exactly, but 
but it's going to be more of a guide. More of a guide. I really liked it. And um, you could do this in different colors. Think of this with like um, a nice warm but pale green. If So instead of the blues, what if it was greens? <clears throat> So if you're painting this and you wanted your enchanted forest or woods to be, you know, in that green, the green hues, then by all means, go for it. So oh, I am just like, I told you, this is going to be a problem. Don't be surprised if you don't see one of the, my paintbrushes end up stuck in my hair and this all pulled back before we're done. Okay. Today I'm using, yet again, the, um... Artegria brushes and there we go then of course you guys know these were sent to me I do have the quills the quills are in here as well and that set of brushes so far so far I'm kind of liking them um I still do plan to do a video sorry that shows like exactly what my favorite um <clears throat> kind of budget brushes are so I'm going to make, we're going to get the desk a little bigger. Boom. And today, open up this palette. All right. And I'm going to grab a palette knife really fast. Just one second. Mm. All right. Got my palette knife. And I went with the one that is skinny because, you know, I'm going to be putting some. I'm probably going to just stick it in the wells. That way there. I will know. Of course, I have my, if you hear water gurgling, that is because I am using, I have my rinse well, water well on the desk here again. And, of course, I have my paint puck. You guys, I keep like four water wells on my desk. This is, you guys have seen this guy before. And I have my paint blender. One that we did in the live stream before. I always have at least, at least three on my desk. Usually four. And then the rinse well, I can always be empty. And I try to use the rinse well just for grabbing clean water. Um, but, you know. All right, so I'm going to put, let's see how we're going to put these out. So it's kind of going monochrome with this. And I am not worried about, um, I'm not worried about the, like, how am I going to stick that in there? There we go. I'm not drawing anything out. I'm just, we're just going, we're just going to go for it. This is, it's trees, um, you know a lot of lines so there's some I, it could be more than I'm gonna need and that's okay I'm just gonna clean this off first I'm just gonna make sure I scrape everything I can off back in there and then I'm just gonna take a piece of towel I'm gonna get that damp so I just fold that over clean it off there we go all right and so next I want, and I'm going to leave a few spaces. I'm really thinking some of this blue. Again, whatever I don't use, I may, maybe like, you guys might be looking at me going, that is way too much gouache. I'll never use that much gouache. Probably not, but I can just scoop it out and put it back in there. I just want to make sure that what is on my, um, that my palette, the big palette, doesn't dry out because I'm not going to be using all of this today. So the exact colors, not really that important. We're going for blues. Um, this is almost like a desaturated, kind of looks like a cerulean type that's been, you know, a few shades darker. And of course, shade, you add black, tint, you add white. So in case anyone's not familiar, 
All right, and then this blue, let me just show you what this blue actually looks like. Um, I think I'll put it on this side. Let's see if I can, I'll just put a little there. I'm not gonna get as much of this. I don't know how much I will actually need of this one. I think this is gonna be like an indigo and who knows, this may be the one that I like the most and all right. I'll show you guys exactly what that color looks like as soon as it's beautiful. As soon as we get these on here. <clears throat> yeah, isn't that crazy, Joseph? Talking 30 years ago, what the highs would be and what they are now. And a little bit of the black. And here, I don't know how much, again, I'm going to need. Because none of those trees were really black. They were just darker values. All right. So now I can get this big. Oh, and I did say some gray. Let me grab a little bit just in case. Just in case. I'm just going to seat that off on the other side. Okay. <clears throat> so I have five colors on my palette. I'm going to close this up. Of course, we can always come back and grab more if we need more. But now if I were doing this in like greens, if I wanted greens, I would probably using like this, which almost looks like a very pale, like a Naples yellow. Um, it's a very cool yellow. It's leaning more towards green. Didn't I, I said warm earlier. A green, no, the yellow is leaning towards green. It's cool. The green leaning towards yellow is going to be warm. So I said, I did say it backwards, but I would go with like the Naples yellow and then like maybe like this guy or even which that one, if you can see there, gorgeous color, almost like a sea foam or even like when it, there's more like a teal. Anyways, just experiment, have fun whatever you like. All right, palette is the correct way. Words are facing the right direction. So now I'm just going to click these back on so I can set this. And this is where, if you guys have seen Lindsay use this palette before, she said like, it doesn't want to click. And I don't know if any of you guys, there it goes. See, it's almost like you got to like push down and click it in. There we go. And of course that handle, this one was broken. We won't lift it by that. All right, so let me get back up this way so you can see that. Okay, I'm going to take, that is our paper from last week. I'm just setting my palette beside me here. I'm going to end up knocking stuff down. I know I'm going to knock stuff everywhere. Okay. There, I just set that palette beside me so that if I need more paint or more colors, it's right there. So let's look at our palette. And this was of course our from last week. And there you can see the colors are quite, quite opaque. So I'm just gonna fold this in half and show you our palette for today. All right. And this, I have my paper. This is the Canson XL, which I'm still, still on the search. I was talking to Cora of Cat's Art Picks and, uh, right? I'm pretty sure about the, oops, about the Canson XL watercolor paper. And I had got it like, there, I have a link to it in the description. But like when I got mine, there was probably like, I think I got them for like five or six dollars for the nine by 12 pad that flips up the, like it would flip up this way. So it flips up the tall way and uh, I got them for like five or six dollars. So I got, I got a few and I shouldn't have gotten a few until I knew that I liked the paper or not because for watercolor, I don't. When I was just practicing a lot, you know, it, it was great for 
I'm kind of, mm -hmm, it was, but it wasn't. It was, it was wonderful to be able to like start to see what watercolor would do and what I could do with it. But I quickly was frustrated with the paper. Did not care for it. It warps, it buckles. I've done the video showing you guys how I then straighten it out, which I had to learn because of how much it would warp and buckle. But I like to use a lot of water when I'm doing watercolor and I like a lot of like wet and wet. So speaking of lots of water, I'm grabbing the large quill from the quill set and just so I can grab some of these colors. Here is one of our blues. And this, you see how much water, it just keeps right on going. This holds a lot of water. So that, isn't that a gorgeous blue? It, it's beautiful. It's like, kind of like the ultramarine, but it almost looks, actually it might just be ultramarine because it doesn't have enough of that darker value that I would think of like with for indigo. So, and this quill brush just keeps on, look at that, keeps on giving. And there I'm getting more quality like regular watercolor. That's really what I wanted to know um, straight out the gate was, how am I gonna be able to do that? Because when I get down to blending, when I do the fog at the end, I'm gonna need some thin down white and I may end up going back in so that I can get more of a buff color. Um, yeah, I can't, yes, we were. Okay. So it was Cora that I was talking to the, um, it, it just can't handle the water, uh, for water, watercolor paper. It doesn't handle the water very well. In my opinion, some people may love it. I not a big fan. And of course this just black, I don't think we really need Right. So just our black. I just want to see how much I can thin this as I just come back with the water. Okay. Right. And then, oh, I agree, Jacqueline. I, I cannot, I do not like when we get the heat wave. And then of course I did get some of the gray. Like in the beginning, when I am using the paper, it's like, you know, like, like this right now, it can start to handle it, but the more water you get in there, forget it. It just wants to bend and buckle. I may be able to use this gray very much desaturated. Oh, what did you get, George? George got some art supplies in. Look at that, though. That is what you did. You see how streaky that was until I, and then I went back over that and that that kind of blended very nicely. I like that. And I'm doing this test not only to show you the colors that I'm using today. Um, but. I want to see how exactly this, how, how are they going to blend out if I just add extra water? And then this is the color I was thinking because as this blends out, I was thinking that background, if we see that, uh, the image down there and on the bottom right of your screen, I might need to put a little bit of white in with this and brighten that just a tad bit, but I'm thinking this could very much be our background color. See how that's like, it's very, so see there, it's very streaky. And then I just went in and clean my brush off. 
So again, still using that quill and I'm really wiping this off on the, I'm not touching it to a paper towel. I'm just wiping it off. Let me bring that in so you can see. I mean, I'm just pulling that off on the edge and then coming back in. And it's really kind of, it's really blending out nicely. Yeah, I am liking that. I'm liking the way that it's blending. So I think with a little bit of white, if I'm looking at um, over here, I think with a little bit of the white in there, we might be able to achieve like that background color. Because again, I'm not going for exact, but I do want to mix up my background color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm not even going to put the white on here because I already showed you guys as I've, this is all wet now. Yes, of course I did it that way. You see the white is right there, right there. It is very opaque. So, all right. Although this, this one might be the winner. I'm looking at the background. See, if I bring this over here, what do you guys think? I'm actually looking at my screen, that one versus, I think that's, it might be a blend. It might be a blend. I'm going to take a little bit of this and, oh, nice. George got his first, uh, Pam pastels. I have them, George. I haven't used them yet. They're I actually, for patrons, because one of my new, uh, the new rewards on one of my tiers is a paint along and I'm considering the pan pastels for the first one. I really want to do that. And I have, I already have my reference picked and I'm really looking forward to that. All right. I'm just going to, Right now I'm working on mixing our background color. So I'm taking a little bit of this and I'm calling it ultramarine. That's not indigo. That is definitely way too bright. Is it ultramarine? I don't know, but it looks like ultramarine. And so, and this is almost like, it's like a Wedgwood blue. Like if you guys know what I'm talking about there. See how just really, almost like a desaturated cerulean. It's what I, I mean, that's what comes to mind. Okay, just gonna wipe that off. I'm gonna rinse this out. Yes, thank you, Tara. Um, I have new rewards. I just I just launched all new rewards. We're talking about Patreon. And one of them is I'm gonna putting that beside it because I'm gonna pull these together now and see what we get. <clears throat> So mixing about 50, 50, I want to see what the color looks like. And then I'm going to actually, again, I'm going to bring it over here so we can see next to that reference photo and decide, is that the color? And then we're going to go right in and start painting that. And I want to, again, bring this down, rinse my brush. So you're just really wiping that off because this quill holds a lot of water. Come back through one more time and I'm going to pull it even further so I can see what that lighter value is going to look like. That is pretty close. Close enough that I think I'm going to call it close enough. So I'm just going to blend these two together, double check my color with a quick swatch, and we're going to go in and paint the background. So I'm just going to mix these two right up here. <clears throat> and this is going to be, give me, I might need a bit more of the gray, which if I do, I'll just scoop some with the palette knife. Because this is still going to be a little bit more ultramarine then. There we go. Still going to be a 
a bit more and I don't want to fill this brush all up, but I am going to do the whole background. So I'm not going to worry too much about having a ton of paint in my brush. Okay. So the color that you see here on my palette, this is going to be, if you look at the trees and I'm just going to kind of bring this to the side. I'm sorry if that scraping is coming across. All right. I'm going to make sure I pull a lot of that color. I am just gently pulling this from my brush. Because what I'm going to want is for this to be one of my darker colors I work up to. All right. So that's going to end up being one of my darker colors that I work up to. I'm dipping my quill in that water. I'm just going to come over here into this well. And really, you guys cannot see that. Let me set this aside. I'm going to bring this over so you can see how I mix that color. There. So just getting a lot of that water. I dipped it into the water, straight into my water. Back here. Now I know that I'm making this, this is going to be mixing more like a watercolor, thinner, much thinner with the gouache. But I'm not overly concerned about that at the moment. And again, you may be, you may be watching going, no, that's not right. That's not right. It's okay. All right. I want a little bit of this white. Placing that right there because I'm going to need to pull. I'm going to need to pull from that so that I can adjust my colors. Okay. Let me just check in with chat really fast. Yep. Excuse me. You're correct. Hobby artists. <clears throat> the, um, you have to be really careful with the cancer next out how much water you water you use because it will buckle. It will definitely buckle. Okay. Is that M Y I or my eye designs? Either way. Thanks for joining us. It's Michelle. Is that, all right, see, all right, I'm just going to say Michelle. It's Michelle from Vancouver. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Michelle. You've changed your name. We are glad that you came back and joined us again. Okay. It is a pretty dark blue. Yes. All right. And Tara, uh, I love this palette. I love this palette. I use this palette often. All right. I'm just pulling into this, some of this white, right? I know I put the more liquid here. Okay. Now I'm going to pull into that white and now look, so look at what we've got there. Let's just double check this because I'm going for my lightest value that's in the background, right? And maybe just a little bit lighter. So I'm going to pull a little bit more of this white in here. <clears throat> and I know this mop, uh, this quill, it's a quill is loaded with that paint. Okay. So if you see that, I'm just kind of holding it next to that for you, I'm just going to go with that. And if I need it lighter, I'll just do a little bit more water. All right. So first things first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this color down and then I'm going to lay this through the background. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and I'm going to come right back in and I'm not going to worry if some of my colors move. I don't know how they're going to move. This is the first real painting that I'm doing with these. 
So to start with, and I'm not wetting my paper. My paper is not wet. Should I? I don't know. We're going to find out. Um, we are just going to come in here and get this background. If I need to grab some more water, I will. Uh, but again, I this is the Canson. I didn't want to be dealing with it buckling. And I can already see it kind of lifting a bit just from what I had on here already on this brush. Um, but hopefully not too, too bad. I'm not going to um, worry about like, you see there, I just different values. Not going to worry about it. I am going to grab some water and just come in here and blend. And so I'll lay this down and then I'm going to come back and check with chat. Is anybody, is anybody painting this? Anybody doing this one? You have to let me know in the chat. I'm not too worried if I'm seeing brush strokes here. I actually just grab some more water, grab more of that. If I need to blend up some more, I will. Um, if this part is lighter, I'm not worried about that either. We're going to be putting a lot on here. And this is larger than I normally work when we do a live stream. But I was thinking, you know, we are diving right in. We've already looked at these last time. There we go. <clears throat> and you see, it doesn't want to really, unless I grab that water, it's not wanting to move. It just gets into that paper and it feels like it's just setting right there. And I'm going to grab more white. And instead of the water now, I'm using this thinner color that I made here. Let me slide this over just a little bit more so you guys can see that palette. There we go. So I'm using that much thinner version of the color that I knew I liked to blend this down versus grabbing water. There we go. And then once I get this on here, then I'm going to grab some water and I'm going to blend it through. There we go. And now the bottom is more of like you know, there's like that gray. If you see right here in the reference photo at the very bottom, it looks really gray. We're going to bring that out and maybe I'll just throw a little bit of gray in here to start with. And there goes my hair again. <laughs> I'm telling you, I am going to end up getting some in here and I'm going to go on the outside edges and I'm just going to bring in a little bit of the, some dark. And all I did was grabbed over here. And I'm just going to pull on this side right now. I'm not worried about it being blended. I'll go back and grab some water and blend that in a moment. But just looking at kind of my reference, I have some areas where there's a little bit of darker. So maybe some more dense trees. Um, and we're just going to convey that making this a little bit darker. And I'm probably going to switch my brush here soon. Once I get this background set. And you could be using, you don't have to use a quill brush. You could, if you don't have one, it's not a big deal. You could use a, um, an oval wash that would work just fine. Uh, if you had a, just a flat brush, use a flat brush. Use what you have a large, a large round that would work too. So use what you have. All right. Stirring that water is blue. Well, it's just going to get bluer. Okay. 
I'm gonna do it in watercolor pencils. Nice. Oh, that would be that would be great too. You could absolutely do this in watercolor pencils. Okay. So now I think what I'm actually going to do, I'm gonna rinse out this quill brush. Grab clean water over there. Just so I can set that one. I'm just setting this one. I'm gonna hook it on the back side so that it can drip to dry there. Did I, I just, it's not wanting to focus again. There we go. Okay. I'm going to grab a flat. So this is a three quarter flat. I'm just going to get that wet. And I'm just going to use it to blend this. I just want to make this nice and smooth. And hopefully this gouache is going to let me do that. Right? How much can we re-wet and work it once it, because this, this is like, that's dry. If I can't, I'll just go over with another layer. I'm not worried. We saw how opaque it was. Um, this is just for basically, you know, kind of, and that, look, it's like pulling it up. It's like, it is, it's pulling it up. So that tells me, no, I need to blend it while it's wet. If I come back through, it's going to want to lift some because it dried. It dried super fast. And this is a little buckled. Hi, JR. Okay. So good to know. Great to know. Let's. I think because of the way that I want to. That was my clean, that was my clean water I didn't want to use. I think because of the way that I'm going to want to blend this out to get my background set, I'm going to grab this oval wash. I don't want hard edges. I don't want hard edges. So I'm just going to rinse that off. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to grab more of my white. So I'm going to scoop a bit of that out there. I'm just getting off what's on my palette knife. Might as well use it. I saw the, this image on Pixabay and I thought I would really like to do that. And I was just flicking specs all over my desk. Um, I actually was inspired by and I apologize. I shouldn't even talk about it because I don't remember who did it. And I absolutely like making sure that I give credit where credit is due. But there was a post over in the Lockery Artist group. And she did kind of that enchanted woods looking scene. Hers was green. Um, and she had an owl. So if those of you who follow that group, if you know what I'm talking about. And it was beautiful. And I thought, oh, I would love to do something kind of like that. That would lend itself really well to gouache. And now see, I'm going to go in the opposite direction too. I just really am trying to get a nice blend. And I'm grabbing this. You see over here was the more wet. Reworkable. Um, no, it's supposed to be reworkable. It is supposed to be reworkable. And I would say that it is to an extent, George, because when I just, when I just went over this, I was lifting. So I should be able to redo that, but it was that first layer. And I am sure that as I'm going through with this, that I am most likely, you know, this is rewetting kind of blending in. Um, this can actually absolutely be done in any color. Uh, you could do this in purples if you wanted to do it in purples. If purple's your favorite color, do it in purple. Um, if I'm just grabbing, look at, see, Precious has just went out the window. <laughs> it has left the building. Um, yeah, there it goes. And it's getting like tucked back. It's, it's about to be pulled backwards. Probably as soon as I get this background blended. I 
it is and making me crazy. There, look at that. And I'm not going to be too concerned because um, I'm putting a bunch of trees on top of this. Do you guys do that? Oh my gosh, I do that all the time. I'm like, oh, I want the background to look a certain way. And then I'll start really worrying about it. And it's like, why are you so concerned? You're about to paint an entire forest in front of this and you're barely going to see that background. So I do that all the time. I don't know if you guys do, but I do. Purple is what you were thinking. Yeah, that's excellent. Yes. It, blue gray hair. Yeah. I don't know about gray. I, I don't, I don't, I want to fight that every step of the way. <laughs> luckily, luckily my hair does not show. Um, it's not getting gray. Yes, I have colored my hair before, but um, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a while since I have colored my hair. And there's a lot of stuff growing out there. <sighs> I feel very lucky that there's not more showing my age than there is. All right. Although, you know, some, some get, I don't think you can really tell. I don't think you can really go by that because some people get a lot, get gray at a very young age. Okay. I'm just very lightly kind of wisping over this here. Again, I'm going to put a forest in front of this. So I meant the palette colors. I know Tara, I know you did, <laughs> but I like immediately, I immediately went there too, right? With age. That's funny. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll get, I will not be surprised if when I'm done and I go to eat, sit down and see that I have gouache in my hair. That's watercolor. It'll come out. And if it stains, whatever. It is what it is. So just grabbing some more of this white. And again, I am like just done being precious about it. Just mixing that on the palette and go. And that's the other thing too. Do you guys like, this is a small palette for me. It's great for the desk, but when I'm working, it's like my mixing grows and grows and grows all the time. Do you guys do that? I do. I start off with all of the best of intentions, but I'm working kind of monochromatic, um, so to speak. So It's fine. All right. And I actually just grabbed quite a bit of white on there. So I just want to want to brighten this up. I'm looking I'm looking at what I'm seeing on the screen on the reference photo there. And I'm seeing a lot of lighter color. Just kind of brighten a little bit, a few areas up. Again, it's going to be trees on top of this. And this has definitely, I'm going to tip this up in a moment and show you guys while I, I don't think it will take long for this to dry either. And I have, I've mentioned that to you guys before. I don't know why things dry so quickly in my studio, it's like, it's raining outside. You would think hundred percent humidity that maybe stuff would not dry so fast. Not the case, not the case. Okay. And you see how I'm kind of now as these colors blend, and so they are working together. They are blending. I don't mind this texture that I'm getting. Ah, hi, Natalie. I didn't see you come in. If that's your first comment, welcome. Natalie said, just grabbed a porcelain serving platter on Amazon. And that's your main mixing palette. And you still run out of mixing space. See? 
That is me. Oh my gosh. And George says it wouldn't dry in Virginia for about three hours. That is probably so true, George. Just talking about like humidity and but it's raining outside i'm like you would think it's raining that i would get some drying and then how many of you too like i'm thinking how much time have you already spent working this background i mean i'm sure i'll love it when it's everything's done um, but it's like i'm gonna put a bunch of trees and i'm gonna cover this up but i still mess with it just started raining there. Oh yeah, it's been raining here all day, Jacqueline. It's finally moving. It's finally moving off to our east then, if you guys have it now. All right. Yeah, wait till I show you guys how much this is. We've got can you see that? Can you see the we've got some wave going here? Definitely have some wave. I'm catching and I again I'm I'm using this like watercolor, if you would, um, in the sense of, of how much I'm thinning it versus thicker. I mean, is there any rule? Is there a rule like you must use gouache to apply it thicker? Um, I don't know. Or is it just that it's use it just like watercolor, but it's just more opaque? And I'm trying, just trying to darken this up again. Because if you see here on this bottom, down here, right in through here, it's dark. Which I'm going to make that darker with my trees I'm about to put on here. But I want what's going to be shown through to also be a little bit. A little bit darker in those areas. All right. Raining in Vancouver also. Oh, it was gorgeous here on Tuesday as well. In fact, I was misbehaving. I was supposed to get some stuff done and I got lost outside that day. I did the entire Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. I did the entire front of our house. Um, cleaned it. Like all the you know the rails and for the porch and stuff did all the rails i did the front of the house we have like these i don't know what exactly they're called they're like they barn spiders i don't know they're creepy they spin big old webs and they love to live we have a covered porch so they love to be at the top edges I don't love them there. So I was cleaning it. And then, you know, we have like white vinyl siding on our house. So then they like, they mess. And your siding doesn't look like white siding anymore. And it's nasty. So anyhow, I was cleaning that out. All right, enough, enough fussing with that. I'm gonna bring in some of the gray down here. So rinsing that out. And some blue water. All right, cleaning that brush off. My paint block is not stuck. To the... Just a second. Just using my palette knife to get this paint block stuck down. You guys? How many of you use one? Do you guys use paint pucks? I absolutely, you guys know, I love them. I love them. I have them in everything. Yeah, I think this would be gorgeous in purples. Absolutely. And if one of you do it, I would love to see it. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just grabbing some of the gray. Because if you see right down at the very bottom, there's a lot of gray there. So let's just, let's just work some in. Um, we're going to be coming back over top because it's like fog. So I don't mind if it blends in with this blue. Trees are going to go on top. Um, but then we're going to end up coming back with some more on top of that. So 
just going to blend this around. Yeah, if you're if you're in um, the MeWe group, which the link is uh, right here, you can please if you if you paint this, share it in, over in the MeWe group. Let me like I want to see what medium are you working in to do this. What uh, what colors did you choose? I hope that we see some that uh, in a variety of colors. I would love to see that. So I need to get my uh, Facebook group uh, working again. It, it's working. I mean, it's there. Um, it is there. I'm going to, I think I'm going to change it so that the name, because right now I think it is um, Clark Fine Art Artist Group. That's a whole lot to say uh, over there on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, Clark Fine Art Artist Group, which I am going to look into re- doing so I just grabbed some clean water and I'm just softening the edge here and bringing that gray up into a little bit of this which is probably how I'll do it at the end as well to do the fog the final fog but just trying to blend this out a little bit so you see George like this is kind of already starting to dry and I can quickly rework that all right just come right through and now I'm going to kind of dry my brush off and it's not quite giving me what I want. There was just a bit of water there. So just want to kind of work that. There we go. But again, about to put a bunch of trees. So what, do we, what it doesn't matter. A little too precious about it. Okay. There we go. Leaving it. Calling it done. Background is in. Now I will show you what I was talking about. Let me get this flat brush out of my way. Because it is like just laying over this. Popping in my paint puck to dry. I love those things. This one was a gift. I got this one as a gift for Christmas, but I love them. <clears throat> and, you, and if you saw the video when I made the plain air one that you can take from a core water bottle that I gave to Lindsay, um, I use it in there too. Now let's see if we can see. Look at how much, you see the warping? Look how much that comes off that board. And this is wood. So this is not like sometimes you see me use chipboard from like the back of a pad of watercolor paper or something. This is actually wood. It's an old wood palette that I never use as a palette, but I've always used it to tape my stuff down. Usually I have it flipped the other way and then I'll have my palette covering this. So anyways, but it was the Canson XL paper. I figured I would just leave that on there and it's already lifted. Like if you can see, look at, can you see the tape? It's lifted that, right? It, like lifted it up. So yeah. So George, have you ever, I'm just looking at, I'm going to just check in with the comments here. So, well, we're going to let this dry for a few while I check in with the comments and then we're going to mix up. So we're going to take this color. We're going to go a step darker and we're going to do our furthest most trees that you can see in the reference photo that are like much further back. We're going to do those next. Okay. So gouache might be my paint to try eventually opaque and uses paper versus canvases. So, um, I wonder, can it be used on canvas? I would, you know, I would wonder if you painted a canvas with, you can't, uh, you can use it on canvas as well. I have before. Thank you, Tara. I was going to say, if you painted like a watercolor ground, Golden makes one, um, Liquitex Basics, Liquitex, not Liquitex Basics, Liquitex makes one. Um, and I would have to wonder if you used it. Okay, guys, this is like so long and it is just 
I'm going to end up with an in paint. So that's a lot of hair. That is a lot of hair. We're just going to real quick pop it up and out of the way. Um, wow. Yeah. If, have you tried using, uh, painting acrylic? I love doing acrylic on paper too. So I've done that as well. And I'll just come through and gesso the paper and then this is so curly. I'm not even gonna need a clip. It'll just grab itself. But I'll come through and just sew the paper and then um, is what it is, guys. It's out of the way. It's up. We can work. So I'll just like, I'll just sew it and then come in and paint. I love painting on acrylic on paper. So if you haven't tried that, give that a try too. And once you do the gesso on it, you don't like, you don't get this. So I would, I wonder if I gessoed some Canson XL. I know it's watercolor paper. But if I gessoed some Canson XL and then pressed it and made everything nice and smooth again and then went in and painted with acrylic paint, would I, I'm like, look at, I'm looking backwards. It feels like it's sticking up. But would I like it that way? It's quite possible. Quite possible. Um, yeah, Sorry guys, I'm just looking for like, this is huge. I don't need one quite that big. I don't have a clip up here and I can feel it twisting and I don't need it falling down while I'm talking. So I just, uh, paintbrushes, they're not just for painting. They, uh, definitely, here we go. Hold your hair too. So now I'm going to have a paintbrush sticking out of my head for the rest of the time, but that's all right. The hair is not getting in the way. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I bet. Oh, I bet they came out good. You know, I almost painted today. I almost chose some, um, pansies because I have got, I've got some really pretty multicolored pansies out in one of the flower boxes. And, um, I almost, I almost picked painting some pansies today and I was just like, it, this just spoke to me. So that's, that's what we're, that's how we got here. That's what we're doing. Okay. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. And then this is already, I mean, yeah, it's still buckled. It's not completely dry. Oh, sorry. My nose is open. Um, but we're going to continue. We're going to continue on because I don't think like watercolor, I need to worry about it moving or blooming when I put water on it. Do I? I don't know. We're going to find out, but I don't think so. I don't think so. And if you know that I am wrong and you're yelling at me right now because I'm about to make a mistake, you know, that's okay. That's how we, we find out. We experiment. Okay. So my more distant trees are going to definitely be a lot thinner. So I'm grabbing a number six round. There is a, the number six round Again, these are the Artegria brushes. They are linked in the description below. Okay. They come. <clears throat> the quills come in a box like this. You get two. And then the set of 10 brushes. Actually. Comes in the holster like this. And you can, you know. Store them that way. So. So far, I'm liking them. Of course, we did the video on these already, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump into all of that. It's out there. <clears throat> of course, I think when we started that one, that's the one I was like really ill and had to stop. I am supposed to be going, um, and it buckled as well. See, see, it's the same thing. Cats art picks. I I agree. Like. Sorry guys, all of a sudden my nose is itching like crazy. Um, I agree. You said I refuse to throw it away. Like, I'm like, I have got a bunch. I got such a great sale and I got a bunch of it. And I'm very much like, use what you have. This paper is going to be great for something. 
I know I'm going to find something that I will enjoy working with on this paper. And that's why I just keep experimenting and keep trying it. You guys keep seeing it pop up. Um, I'm going to do a whole series on paper. I have a whole bunch of different papers. And uh, we're going to look at, cell, you know, wood pulp cellulose type paper. We're going to look at um, the ones that are like cellulose cotton blend. And then 100% cotton. And see what we like and what we can do on them. So that's something that is going to be coming. Um, so many ideas. So many things that I want to do. So little time to make all the videos. And actually, it's not so little time to make all the videos. It's so little time to edit videos. Is anybody else that makes videos out there? I know a few of you do feel that way. <clears throat> it's the videos. Editing. Okay. So now, for our, further, our furthest back trees, we had this color here. We just did in our background. We just want slightly darker than that. So I'm just going to grab some of this gray. <clears throat> I'm just going to desaturate that a little bit. There we go. I think I need just a little bit more. I always want to go too. I want to desaturate a little too quickly. So just with mixing what's on there. All right. Now, Furthest away, smallest trees. And if I look at the reference photo, pretty much right where the bottom of this window is, if I go straight across, you can see that some of the trunks, they're starting about, all right, I'm working nine by 12. So I'm thinking about an inch up the paper and they're only lasting about an inch to an inch and a half before they reach the part of their trunks where they're splitting. And again, not exact. Mine is not going to look exactly like this. I don't expect yours to look exactly like this. This was an inspirational piece. I do love the, the tree that has the branch reaching at us. And I think we are going to do that. So hopefully we'll get it all done today. This shouldn't, I wouldn't expect take that long. Um, so in, uh, also cats art picks, you said that you already, um, that you already tried acrylic on it. Did you gesso it first? And then I'm thinking if I gesso it and then flatten the paper, then come back, will it stay? Because now it should be sealed from the gesso. So if I'm coming back on it with acrylics, maybe it won't buckle. I don't know. We'll find out. I'll definitely do one. I, I want, I like to experiment. We'll find out. Um, yeah, Hobby Otter said that I don't like throwing away paper either. Uh, I, yeah, and I wouldn't. I would absolutely use it. I would use it for, if I just find some I don't like, whatever. Then I'm probably going to use it. I'll probably make a sketchbook out of some of it. Um, I'll probably just use it for like a practice run. Um, and then actually do the work with you guys on a better quality paper. So we're going to see. Um, using it for journaling. Yeah. See, there you go. Um, oh, see, yep. On now I have the watercolor pencils. I have the out, uh, full set of, I've got a couple different sets of watercolor pencils. And, uh, <clears throat> so anyhow, I, um, I have quite a few and I'm thinking this is looking too blue. So I'm just going to bring this down a bit more and I'm grabbing a little bit of the white because I need it to be lighter. It's going to be a darker value than here, but it still needs to be lighter than this. So I wasn't, I did not care for that one. I'm grabbing a little bit more white, a little bit more gray and a hint of that blue. So anyhow, yes, uh, I have not worked a ton recently with the color watercolor pencils and some paper. 
I just saw Paul Clark just did a video with the, did anybody see that? Did anybody else watch Paul, Paul Clark? No relation. I used to say that all the time. No relation. We are not related. We're, just, we're both Clarks. Who knows? Maybe our ancestors are. <clears throat> but I love, he did the owl. And I, I, I liked that he said how much you can use up a watercolor pencil, especially um, he was talking about with the cold pressed paper, just kind of eating up that pencil. And he much preferred regular watercolor. But. Okay. Yeah, so you see that's just, JR said the same thing, hobby artists. Try a hot press watercolor paper or smooth mixed media, excuse me. Um, some cardstocks, I would imagine they have to be a really heavyweight cardstock, like more than an 80 pound maybe. Um, use, Jacqueline says she uses watercolor pencils. I haven't had any problems with buckling, so that's good. And no, I didn't gesso it. See, I think that gessoing is going to have, gessoing the paper is going to have a huge uh, impact. We'll do it. We'll do, I'll try to, I'll write that down. We'll try to do one of those soon. We haven't, I haven't painted in acrylic in, gosh, I haven't painted in acrylic in a long time. And are we talking, George, are we talking about gouache or are we talking about acrylic? If it can be rolled in a tube. If we're talking about, uh, if we're talking about, if we do the gouache, I'll roll it up. I'll roll it up later and I'll let you know. I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I wouldn't foresee it being a problem, but. You never know. You never know. Okay, so let's get getting to our trees. Or I'm never going to get there. And in the background, again, I'm just. They're going to go. They're going to go however they go. I, if it skips around, I don't mind. I'm putting other trees on top of this. I'm not going to worry about it. Because I would. Because I was doing a lot of this. Both my palette and my brush are wanting to be dry do you do that do you turn your brush and I just kind of turn and push and I let my branches form wherever my branches want to form and then so I guess that's a good and then see like if we look here let me zoom you into this for a second because well, maybe this is valuable information for somebody when I do, let me just get this set for you there. So when I'm working on branches, like this guy had a little extra bump right there. So I may take that and that's where I'm, the next branch would come. And wherever I end up with just a natural movement, like see, can you guys see that well enough? Cause I know this color is light. You'll probably, it'll show up more as we get darker. And again, I'm not going to worry about this. This is going to be covered. You're not even going to see this. Um, just showing it to you for, you know, I happen to think about it. Okay. So when I'm doing a branch or tree, a deciduous type tree, one of the ones that, you know, deciduous trees drop their leaves. Or painting a tree skeleton, if you would. I will just come up with that. So let's go up and then turn and just kind of wiggle my brush. Like I'll turn and push. And that one, of course, got really thick. I normally would not have it that thick. Got a little carried away, but that's okay. Right? So wherever it kind of gives me a night, like right here, I got this kind of bend and there's this little bump. So on that little bump, 
Yeah, because that's what a tree would do. And that's, I let the tree tell me where the branches go. And that's how I do them. So we are just going to keep doing this. I'm just scrolling back. My chat was not staying caught up for some reason. Oh, thank you. I am glad that it is. Oh, see, and I know you were taught saying that's Tara, but uh, watercolor is your favorite. What I'm going to say water soluble right now is like my, one of my, is that's what I'm loving at this point is water soluble media. I just like things I can do with it. Um, so these trees, I'm not going to focus too much going this way because my faintest trees I'm seeing kind of centered. But again, I'm just going to like, And you see how like it skipped? I, it's fine. If it skips, it's fine. I can put another tree. It's going to cover that. And if it doesn't, maybe there's just a lot of light blowing through at that point. And you're not seeing all of that branch. So, and there's perhaps there's some underbrush back there or smaller like saplings. And these are going to be are more distant. And again, I'm looking, you see me kind of looking up. I have it larger. And I was looking at the screen, the little tiny picture that you guys are seeing. Well, depending on what you're watching this on. And I was looking at it on that. And I'm like, I have it large, like whole monitor size. I have three monitors in front of me. And it's on one of my monitors, quite large. And I'm over here struggling, trying to see what things are doing. So you see how, like, I just kind of, I'll roll... I'll roll that brush. And when you're doing like the, the skinny branches, like even with a rigger, oh, that, that works really well. And of course it has so much more, you know, can hold the paint. Not that this doesn't hold enough paint. It does. Okay. See, this doesn't look too impressive at the moment, but we will get there. And you see how when I mix that, I already got into a different value. This is actually a little bit more blue than this was a paler gray. I don't mind. It's fine. Because I pulled in a little bit more of this blue. And then we're going to go to like another step darker. And these back here, these aren't going to have any details. Um, as far as like, I don't know what kind of bark is on them. They're, they're way too far away. gonna lift small lines and I'm just flicking up right so I'm just flicking this up and I'm just putting in this is that brush and I was out I went out back to our wood line um because we have woods at the back of our property <clears throat> and I snapped a couple pictures this is considering using one from my own backyard for the picture and uh I was like, didn't, I didn't get exactly what I was looking for. And when I saw this one, it just spoke to me. I was like, well, that's kind of where I was going. Um, it'd be gorgeous too. We do one that has like a, almost like the path deeper in where it's lit. I've wanted to do one of those too. And again, up here, there's going to be a lot of branches. Like this is going to be, there's going to be branches like of, all kinds of different trees. They're going to go all different ways. I'm just going to flick in. This is going to look weird for now. Trust me. I'm just going to flick some of this in. Cause again, if you look, you can see, you look down there, you can see lots of branches back there, lots of branches. And I'm not just going to do small lines. I'm going to imagine that these go on. What tree do they come from? I don't know. It hasn't grown up yet. Show me. Let me just scrolling through. Again, I must not have been at the end because my chat wasn't moving as you guys were talking. Okay. 
yeah, Canton XL is 140 pound and it buckles like crazy. I just can't handle the amount of water that I like to throw at it. Uh, I was okay. George said I was mainly talking about gouache. I think acrylic can be rolled. Um, so I think I don't know. I was like the watercolor is going to absorb into the paper. Um, we'll see. I'll give it a try. I'll try and, and let you know. And oh, and speaking of next week, I will not be live next Thursday. Um, I am going to be trying to, I'm working on a special video and hopefully I will have that all done and we'll be able to bring that to you next week. Um, but I have, there's a lot going on right at the end of the week next week. So I'm not going to be able to go live. I just know there'll be too much going on. So I'm calling it now. <clears throat> um, but I should be back the week after that and we'll be live again. What will we be doing? I don't know. All right. So here you're just at this point, all I'm doing is picturing lots of trees, lots of branches that are in that background. Um, and they're just flicking in branches. Are they connected here? No. Are they going to be like, they're going to be seen through other trees. Am I going to cover part of them up? Probably. It's fine. So don't be precious with this. Just like this is a great time to practice making branches. Why not? Oh, excellent. There we go. Tara said, I just rolled one and it's fine. It didn't crack or flake. Uh, and I had it applied fairly thick. So there you go. Uh, JR says it takes practice, especially if you generally paint with a lot in your brush. What takes practice? Uh, what are we talking about taking practice? I missed. Somehow I missed what it was that we. Uh, 100% cotton hot press paper. I don't know if I have um, a pad here that's 100% hot press. 100% cotton hot press. I, I have to look. Um, have I ever tried it? I would say not. That doesn't mean I don't have some here. It just means I don't recall trying that. Use and put hot press cellulose watercolor paper. It's impossible to find. Okay. I'm like, I'm trying to catch up with some of what you guys are. Yeah, it's, I, in my opinion, I agree. At this point, I agree. The only reason I'm trying to find something to love on it is because I have too much here in the studio. Will I buy it again? I guarantee you I won't. Because it is. And the, you know what? That is exactly correct. It is discouraging. And that is one thing where I would definitely say that, um, I'm sorry, I was just reading the rest of what was coming in. That if you're trying to use a supply that is not, not working um, or doesn't work well for the technique, it, it can be very discouraging. And some people can think, you know, well, I can't do it. And sometimes it's not that you can't do it. It's that it is that supply. The supply is actually hindering your process and like some watercolors, they look so much more vibrant on cotton paper. Um, I don't, I don't think that's just my opinion. I, I think that I've heard other, other people say the same, but you know, I get watercolor paper is expensive. And when you go, but I'm just starting out with the medium and I want to, you know, try it. I don't know if I'm going to like it yet. I don't want to purchase a ton of it just to find out that I don't like it. So let's say you purchase Canson XL watercolor paper 
and it buckles and your colors don't move and you can't get the results that you could get doing the exact same thing you're doing on a slightly better quality paper, you might get discouraged and stop. And that's definitely, I'd hate to see that happen. So that is one of my reasons why I have ordered quite a few different types of paper. And we're going to look at them. We're going to look at that. I just kind of stacked that up like a step. You won't see it at the end, but I just <laughs> realized that I kind of stepped that tree right up there. Um, but yeah, that's why I ordered a bunch of papers because I want to do those tests and I want to see, I want to be able to tell you, um, like the B watercolor paper. I'm not done playing with that one yet for sure. Uh, I want to see that. I've got some Hannah Mule, uh, Hannah Mule, Hannah Mule, however you guys say, I'm going to say it. I have some of that. And I can't wait to dive into that one. Um, I was sent another paper by a company and I'm going to be getting to that very soon because they sent me another product, one of their products and the paper to use it on. I can't wait to try that. So we'll be seeing that before long. Um, I keep saying before long, but I've got enough videos here to last till next year. That's why there's some stuff I haven't shown you. you you'll see like little mini hauls um, just because I'm waiting till I can use it to show it to you because, you know, I've shown you so much that I have brought into the studio and then you haven't seen me use it yet. And so I don't want people to get the impression that like I just buy it to sit here and show it to you and then it doesn't get used. That's a waste. Um, and, and it's not the case. I just haven't got to it yet. So... And I have gone quite a while and not gotten any new supplies because I want to do that. And I'm looking, I'm actually really liking the way that that looks. And I'm going to paint on top of it. Um, and if we don't finish this today, then we will absolutely come back to it. But we'll see how, it, if I talk less, talk less, paint more. All right. I'm going to step up to, I know I just keep using these, a bunch of different brushes, but you know, that's also lets me try them out. I'm going to jump up to a number eight round. So you see the difference between the six and the eight. There's a bit of a step there, right there. Okay. So we're going to jump up to the eight round. Now when I'm using, when I do watercolor, my favorite, um, oh, it's in my go bag, which is this back here. I took this with me the other day. Um, we went fishing and I was going to, I had every intention of grabbing some pictures and then painting and I was just taking pictures and enjoying. We went with, um, with his uncle and I was just enjoying their company and I didn't get anything painted. So there is my number eight silver black velvet. So that's what I use most of the time. This is like my go-to grab it brush. I love that brush which you guys know, but my goal was, is, oh, and I bumped those bristles. There we go. I like to keep the, the round, and I've mentioned that before, on the end, because when I pop it in my, you guys can't see it here, but when I pop it in my watercolor, like go bag, I can just actually set that brush in here. I would be crushed if I damaged that brush. And, um, it doesn't get ruined. So yeah, that was my bag was all set up to go, but I didn't go. All right. Let's see. I saw that somebody tagged me. I just want to make sure this is, I'm going to let these, this dry for a second and we're going to make this darker. We're going in with our next layer. All right, I was agreeing. I'm shaking my head in agreement that Hobby Artist was talking about. The, she just doesn't like the buckling of the paper. I'm talking about canceling, yes. Um, so your hot press cotton paper and watercolor, you're gonna get very different effects. Cold press paper versus a hot press paper. So that's just another thing to remember. Um, Cat's art picks, whether it buckles or not, but 
it's cotton paper. You may have to stretch your paper first. Um, but the way that it sits on hot press because it's so much smoother, the watercolor pencils would probably blend out beautifully on hot press paper. Um, if you if you were ta if we're talking watercolor pencils, watercolor it's just gonna it's just gonna act different because it's cold press versus hot press. Absolutely, be great to experiment and try it. Um, yeah, so. Um, I understand that hobby artist says that the cost of good watercolor that hand uh, um, watercolor paper, I'm assuming that handles water well is pushing me away from watercolor, even though I like the look. And that is why I wanted to do the series on paper because I really want to show you guys. I have a bunch of price ranges and I want to see what doesn't do this what does do you know that buckling and how how's that going to be so if that's something you're interested in smash that thumbs up button drop me a comment and let me know and um you know possibly even worth hitting that subscribe button be notified when it when it happens but i do want to look at it i have i'm collecting quite a few um yeah absolutely paper is your most important uh, when it comes to your water soluble media. And so that is my goal. Again, like the brushes, I was looking for one that you don't have to spend a fortune on, but they work well. And the paper, if we can find a paper that's really nice, that's not going to cost you a fortune. How much fun is it to just play an experiment with that? So Spend so JR says spend less on paint and brushes. Uh, you can make amazing paintings with lower quality paint and brushes with high quality paper. Paper does. I I would not have like when I first started. I did not know how much the paper, how important the paper was. So important. It absolutely. I'm just working on, while I'm talking to you guys, I'm working on mixing up my color. And I'm not going to zoom out because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing with the trees. But I'm just working on mixing a little darker version for my next layer forward. But yeah, I, I for how much the, I just grabbed more of the, the blue, that I thought I was going to use, but didn't use like the desaturated cerulean type color. I just grabbed more of that. I really think that that is what I'm going to do for this one. Yeah. I want this a little darker, a little more blue, but really working into the gray, gray scale here. Oh, you're hearing that my brush is like tapping my ring. Sorry. If you can hear it. That's just the way I was holding. I was holding it very loosely. <clears throat> More gray. I just keep going back and forth. A little bit of the gray, a little bit of the, I'm just saying desaturated cerulean. I'm not sure what they're calling that color. I would have to look at a color chart because, you know, Lindsay gave me the colors. There wasn't a chart with them. I just need to look it up. I think I saved it. I probably have it, but I probably have an image of it. Okay. So there we go. But yeah, paper definitely makes all the difference. And Hobby Otter said that he liked the Blick, the Blick Studio watercolor paper. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that you're, I agree with you. I was gonna say, I don't disagree. Wait a minute. That's double negative. Yes. I agree with you. Um, you don't need to start with hundred percent cotton paper. I did not start with hundred percent cotton paper when I decided. So I got into watercolor because I, I wanted, and I've shared this just recently. I wanted to loosen up my 
what I was doing. I wanted to loosen up my artwork. And so I went with, um, now some of these I'm going to move slightly forward. So I'm going to get a little bit closer, not a lot closer to the bottom of the page. I should have brought these up a little bit more, but it is what it is now. So anyhow, I, um, definitely, I'm just getting a basic tree and I'm just going to kind of let my brush take that tree wherever it wants to. There's a tree. So anyways, when I first started, I definitely, I did not use a lot. I did not use cotton paper. Um, it was very expensive. I was like, oh, I, I'm not spending that kind of money to not know if I'm going to enjoy this. And I got into the watercolor because my acrylic was just, I wanted to loosen up. And no matter what I did, I just could not seem to loosen up in my painting. So I decided, you know what? watercolor has a mind of its own and I figured it would that would kind of force me to loosen up and at first I did not I really didn't care for it and then the more you see I'm again I'm just kind of I'm just thinking of each tree on its own I'm just going to completely go through and make my trees however they are. And then as I layer each level up, some are going to get covered over and that's fine. That's exactly what we want. And I'm seeing this where this one I'm actually was seeing through. So I know I have this color is diluted too much. Um, after I finish this one, I'll probably thicken this up. So it's more opaque because here's where the gouache is going to come into play. I want what gouache gives me that opacity. And so some of this is thinned a little too much. And you see, again, it skipped around a little. That's fine. And did you see how like where it, it bumped down? So And that I made a bump, so I'll go off from there. That tends to be in here. There's a bump, so I'll bring that up there. That just tends to be how I do my branches. Here, it comes up. My brush skipped, so I got a bump there. So I will just bring that branch up, and there will be another one that will come off that way. And I don't see I did, see I did it again. It was thicker, so. That's just how I do them. When I'm working on, and like, even if I was painting like leaves all over this, I would still be doing the same. I'd still be doing the same thing. I would make all of these branches and then I would come back through because now I know where my leaves go because I have the skeletal structure of my tree. Okay. And I might go just a little bit over, but I am not going to go completely um, beyond five o'clock because I really do want to be conscious and considerate of your time, but we'll come back and finish this because I really do want to give it the time it needs. I'm like, I'm very excited about this one. And so if you paint it and you finish it, because again, I won't be live next week. Um, so it's going to be in two weeks, we would finish this one. But if you do yours, I'd love to see them pop them up on the meeting group. And I know that the chat has come through. I will catch up with that in a minute. I'm not ignoring you. All right. I need to mix this a little bit darker. So I'm seeing one two maybe two more levels and then my darkest tree so i'm gonna get through this level 
I want to get through this level of trees or, or this depth, if you would, today. And then we'll come back. Now, again, I'm using that desaturated cerulean for, I will, I will have the, what the actual name is. I'll, I'll get that. So when I come back next time, I'll have that for you. This brush is so full of paint. But hopefully that's a little thicker now. I just really messed up my white. That's okay. There we go. All right. And so now it's just a matter of where do I want them? Where do I want my next trees to go? And how much do we want this to stay loose? Oh, that one got really thick. That was a thick branch there. Not a problem. Do you want it to stay really loose or do you want to get more detail? Like I can come back through with different highlight colors on my trees and shadows and you can get very detailed here. If you actually look at this reference photo, you can see at about the one, two, probably this third, about this layer, you start to see some shadows and highlights on the tree. So it is certainly something that we can do. Again, I probably won't get to that kind of detail today. And I need more water in my brush. There's a lot of paint in this brush. Sometimes I just think I should mix with my palette knife so that I don't fill my brush full of so much paint. Because I don't want to rinse it out and, and lose all that. Okay. So again, I'm just going to continue. Now you see through. Now you see why I said with those more distant trees, we didn't have to worry about the branches like just being wherever because as we keep painting each layer in front we're getting more and more branches and that's just adding to the background and this this little tree for that little trunk has quite the reach there but that's okay it got a little carried away Because there are a lot of branches back there. We're just going to let it go. And in fact, I can actually see a tree. Like there's a little dappled tree, like the leaves and stuff in there. This is not all fall. And some of these, some of these tree trunks, the next level forward, they've got some vines on them. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be interesting. We can go with that. Something similar. And then I was thinking, imagine if there was like little, like little fireflies in there. That's what I was thinking as far as like additions to put in there. So I really think I should have even moved this up higher, but that's fine. Looking at, looking at that reference. a second I'm going to go back to the chat get caught up there because it did pause where I left off so I can actually see it so if you did leave me a question or said something I will come back to that in my 
sorry, I have to reach across there. My all of a sudden, one of my monitors decides, I'm gonna shut off. I'm not gonna let you see anymore. And it had my reference photo. And you'll notice too that I'm varying the trees. Like I am varying their overall size, like the, the trunk sizes. I even though they're in this same like depth of field by color, um, I still want them to be of varying size. So I just kind of rolled my brush there. I knew I was getting a little too, going to get a little too heavy handed. So I just kind of started rolling my brush away. So let's see. Here it goes. Yeah, see, that's, that's what I'm saying. George said, you used to plan out stuff. Like that's what I'll probably use it for. If I can't find something else, I will probably use it like that. Just use it to plan my projects and things of that nature. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, see, I, I don't have the gum tape either. I know what you're talking about, Steven. I haven't got the gum tape either, but I thought about getting some. Phil Stroll, hello. Thanks for joining us. Isn't that the truth? Yes. Yes, cotton, because it was all cotton. That That's how they made it. And then they got into wood pulp and then cotton paper just gets so much more expensive. Oh, definitely. It's going to happen. That is, that is going to happen. I've already ordered, um, I've ordered a bunch of the papers. So we are going to be looking at papers. Um, and when I do it in a series, I'm thinking a series where, you know, there will be so many videos put out that's, each paper because I'm not going to just use a piece uh, just use a type of paper once and then for my opinion on it you know that I like to throw as much as I can at them so yeah we are going to definitely look at some papers and again here I'm just kind of skipping around there's going to be you see how much is on that right side and again I am not following this reference exactly I am not worried about it uh, but there is a lot of branches over here. So, and this brush is not staying. I, it's not holding my point. Like if this was watercolor or if this was acrylic, I would be able to keep that point together. It's not holding it like it normally does. And it may just be that I have too much paint up in the belly of this brush, which is probably the case. So. Yes. Okay. See, Tara said the same thing. Tara said the same thing. It's, it's going to happen. I'm, I'm definitely doing it. This reference, I'm wondering how this would look if I would do this using dry painting media. I would love to see it. Why not? Go for it. You'd have to plan it out a bit more, I'm sure. You'd have to do a bit more planning. Or not. You're just going to work from your lightest to your darkest as long as you can go over it and you have the opacity to layer, then I think that would still, I think that would work. I just decided we needed more branches down there. And see how this, like, it, it could have broken off. That branch could have broken off there. But because there's that bend there, perhaps I'll just extend it. Okay. 
So I just think the, this is a really fun exercise doing something like this in say tree branches are your nemesis. Well, grab yourself a piece of paper and slowly build your values. Make your trees larger as you come forward. Do it in any color. Do a monochromatic study in any, any color that you choose. Whatever you like. Make it just black and white. So it's just grayscale. That would completely work for this as well. So it's whatever, whatever you would like. And the most important thing is just have fun with it. You can't do it wrong. You, you can't. You cannot do it wrong. And I think, like I was saying in the beginning, we spend so much time going, oh, well, I got it. the background has to look just so. You can't even, like, you, it's starting to fade there. You're not seeing it so much. So, like, why, why do we do that? I do, I do it to myself all the time. And here I'm just trying to get some that are a bit smaller because not all these trees are going to be the same size. And I've noticed that my brain is making them the same size. So I really want to throw in a few that are not so large. Oh, look, and now that one just took over and that became part of that tree. It just happens, especially if you're creating like a woodland scene, you can't go wrong. So why not just sit there and practice? And, and this can be, I don't know about you guys, but it can be very relaxing to me just doing branches, tree branches. Now I'm just going to, again, flick in some, like, we're going to get some underbrush here. Um, perhaps I'll dapple in. I'm seeing over, I'm sorry, right? Maybe we, there's like some shrubbery back here. I'm going to dapple some of this in. And all I'm doing is putting some dots in here. Could be leaves back there. Who knows? Your, the brain will fill in. It'll just assume and fill it, fill in what it sees. That tree's quite the wiener. So, yeah, and actually, uh, now that I look at it, in the reference photo, you actually do have some little shrubbery back over in this area, so. All right, I need to put in a few more. Okay, I'm going to bring another one over here. And I'm going to do a couple more over here. I'm going to catch up with the chat too. And we're going to, and I'll pause at this level and we'll come back and do the next two. Well, it should be another level and then the, the big focal point tree. That big focal point tree that's kind of goes up and it's foggy, but there's that branch that's kind of reaching right towards us. And we're going to do that guy next time. But that would be in two weeks from now. So let me just double check chat. <clears throat> My favorite watercolor pencils, I don't know yet. Um, I do have a few brands. Uh, I'm hoping since they were my most expensive ones, that my Albert Durer by Faber-Castell are going to be my favorites. I do have the complete set of those. I can tell you that the Goldfarber, I don't like. I tried the Goldfarber by Faber-Castell and I do not like them because in my opinion, they just didn't have the pigment payout that I was looking for. Um, I have tried the Arteza watercolor pencils and when I tell you that I felt that those had more payout with the pigment than the gold farber, I mean, that's, you know, that's saying, now the gold farber is student grade. It is a student grade watercolor pencil. So I'm not expecting that to have what the Albert Durer's would. So when I say, um, you know, I, not so much disappointed, like I, that's, I expected that they weren't going to be on of the same, sorry, I expected that they weren't going to be of that same caliber. Um, 
but I have quite a few. I have quite a few. And we are definitely, I have lots of supplies. We are going to look at them all eventually. Um, so if there's something that we talk about that you like, that you really want to see, I gotta tell you, you know what, you know that saying, right? That the squeaky wheel and all, um, let me know, drop it in the comments, be talking about it because the more we talk about it, the more likely it is going to be sooner versus later. So, um, Jacqueline said found a, oh wow, a partial block of arches that was only $4. That's great. Especially if it was, you said partial, but if it was more, um, Apparently I can't branch and talk at the same time, you know, only $4, but if it was close to being a full pad, that's fantastic. And then even like, if you figure out what the full price is and then what you ended up paying per sheet, isn't it great though, when you find like art supply, well, art supply treasures. Um, that tree's a little, a little wonky there. I'm going to fix it. Oh my goodness. Cat's Eye Pig says the ice cream truck was there. I don't know how long ago that was, unfortunately. Because my summer's falling. Oh, excellent. I'm glad that that helped. I do that all the time. So I'll take, there's nothing on the bottom of this. I will often take my brush and I'm not really applying pressure because I mean, these are watercolor brushes. I don't want to damage them. I will do this with acrylic too. And I'll take my palette knife and I will just slightly put a little bit of pressure here and I will get the rest of, if there's too much paint in the belly of that brush, just that gentle, as I scrape and I kind of pull back, I can get that paint off. And then, you know, there's your, your point is very well refined. Now there's still, the paint is down more. I didn't want more water in my brush, but I knew there was too much paint there. And that's why I did that. I'll do it in acrylics all the time too, because I am notorious for getting too much paint in my brush and then I have to get some of it out and I hate to just go rinse my brush and rinse out all of that or wipe it all on a towel. All right. So that, see that bump is still sticking out there. It's becoming a branch and that's all I do. Anytime something like that happens, just let it grow that way. We are definitely getting a lot more branches in our background there. Um, George asked, oh, thank you. Trees are looking great. Did you say you're going to do the wide one in front or keep them skinnier? No. Oh, so that large focal tree in the front, I really like that tree. He's like gnarly and he's hanging out. And I have a tree in my backyard. I actually have two. And they are giant rock maples. I believe they're rock maples. These, this tree is monstrous. It is like the tree is as wide. If you picture a Jeep, like a CJ7, like a big Jeep, the entire body of the Jeep before the hood sticks out, like this tree is like that large. It's, it's monstrous. And um, it has this great big, we have this one great big branch that like sticks out. There used to be a few, we've lost a couple branches off of it and I won't let me cut it down because I'm like, this tree is ancient. I know this tree is so old. There's no risk for it hitting our house or anybody else's house. So I won't let them take it down. I'm like, just let it be. 
let it continue. And that's what this tree makes me think of. So yeah, I'm going to keep the that big tree that's going to end up here and coming up. I want that to still be my focal point. So yes, I am going to keep that. I'm going to keep some of these. These will be a little bit um, you know, different coming forward, but I want that big tree. And I might take that big one. Yeah, I'm going to take it pretty close to the bottom of the paper. I should have started a little higher. So if you're watching this on the replay and you're considering maybe you are going to paint this, where I said like an inch, I would still, I would raise that another, probably another inch. I would go up almost two and then three, start my small ones up in here maybe, or at least half that distance. Maybe I would start these like about here. Just because it would give more room as we come forward. And I do that all the time too, because I didn't draw it out. If I would have sketched, even roughly sketched a couple of these trees in, I would have known exactly where they were going to go, but it's all right. Okay. And then back in here, there's some more. I'm going to put a few back this way. And that side looks like it's a bit lighter. It's fine. The light is on this side. For some reason, it was just looking darker on the one side. And I think I need, really, I need more paint. But we're coming to the end, so I'm not going to get any more of the gray out. Um, I'm just going to kind of mix in its well for now. Make sure that color's very similar. Put that in there. I'll say when I first started doing trees though, evergreens, oh, those intimidated the heck out of me. I was like, I didn't want trees that just looked like triangles or remember when we were like, when we were kids and you drew like the little boop boop, like that going down, um, at least I did. And I didn't want that, but they would, oh, they intimidated the heck out of me. And now they're one of my favorite things to do. And I find them so easy. But I find them easy because they intimidated the heck out of me. And I would just paint them. And I find that I do that a lot. Well, with the exception of portraits, because, yeah, no. All of you portrait painters or, or draw, um, the draw portraits, my hat's off to you. Because I can do it. Oh, it just stresses the heck out of me. Mostly because like here, it doesn't matter. This tree is not going to get angry with me because I didn't paint it with five limbs. And I only gave it four. You know what I mean? But a person is going to get very much not pleased if, um, you know, say they're nose doesn't look quite like they feel it should or you know because then it doesn't look like the person so yeah I am capable of doing them I have done them in the past they're just not my favorite things to do okay and again I find that when I get on a certain level I will paint a lot of them the same thickness and I need to not do that. And you know, that giant tree is going to take up this space. So I keep telling myself, don't worry about coming here. I'm going to cover, I might even end up covering some of these up. I kind of like that tree. I'm sad if I have to cover it, but it is what it is. And there's going to be, I'm saving this for the next layer. I'm going to put a darker one there. So I'm going to worry about that. Um, I am going to dapple through though a little bit of, see that? I'm just going to make so that it looks like, and I'm just dabbing because I'm seeing in my reference photo, we have some, maybe there's some leaves, some old leaves back there. So just by dabbing some of this in right now, it doesn't look like anything spectacular, 
But once we get our final layers on, it's just going to push that back and it is going to look. And I do see that there's a question. JR, I will get to that in just a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to dabble in a little bit. Some of this will be covered. We won't worry about it. See, now that it looks like uh, there could, there's a small tree or shrubbery back there. And the more I dapple, the less that light can filter through. I'm just going to go back over the trees, trunks, so that I don't have any dotted areas. I want these tree trunks in front of what I just did. So I'm just pulling that up. Like so. And I'll probably do a little bit more of that through here, but let me just catch up on these questions and I'll put a little bit of that in, but I think that's, we're getting pretty close to where we're going to call it for the day. Someone said ice cream truck. Yeah, they did. I, I need to have ice cream tonight. All right. Well, hopefully it didn't like put you to sleep. <laughs> Give you a trance. As long as it didn't put you to sleep, then we're fine. All right. Hmm. Oh, Cat's Art Picks said double chocolate on a stick is your favorite. Okay, now if it's ice cream on a stick, I want the vanilla ice cream with the chocolate, like, crunchy coating. Or, oh my gosh, what do we used to get? Like the chocolate eclairs or the strawberry shortcakes. Oh my gosh, those are good too. Mm. Okay, I can't choose. I love ice cream, <laughs> except not chocolate. Do not like chocolate ice cream. It can be chocolate mixed in with something else, but I don't like just chocolate. I love um, like mint, mint moose tracks, regular moose, oh, regular moose tracks is my favorite. If you don't know what moose tracks is, it's got, it's vanilla ice cream little tiny like peanut butter cups in it and uh like i think it has like a fudge ribbon that goes through it mm, so good <laughs> thank you thanks michelle this really does add depth and it's simply building that value up so starting with your background then you take your background and you just go one slightly darker color and remember those are going to be much smaller and then you're going to go another, like I could have done an in between this phase, certainly could have done an in between this phase where I went in between this value and that value and then put some in there. You just don't want to get too carried away because if I make, well, how dense is your forest? If your forest is really dense, then sure, just keep going. Um, or be a little sparse in the beginning so that each time you add a layer that now that's creating the density of that forest and you can see all that stuff moving back and it's actually going to give you depth into the woods there so and we're just going to keep building up values which we will do again next time um and now i will schedule it now that i have because we already have the reference photo um you'll see that come up i won't schedule it until and won't be, I won't schedule it for like next week because I won't be live next week. And I don't want it just sitting on YouTube because I'm going to have other videos that will come out be between then. Because I am working on a very special one to bring you next time. I tried the Stadler brand watercolor pencils. Did not like them. Great. Um, oh, so I have the Inktense pencils too. I have the Inktense blocks. I have the Inktense pencils. We have to do something with those too, which I, so many, so many things I can't wait to try. So I just need to get to playing, hit that record button and not worry about it. So I can just get you more videos out. So yeah. Oh, and, uh, generals, generals, like, oh, does generals make a watercolor pencil? I have not seen them. I know they make charcoal pencils. I know they make regular graphite pencils. Um, Uh, 
Oh, it's more of the horse. More of the horse is getting done. I can't wait. I cannot wait to see that one finished too. Do you guys follow? I, I've been following a lot of George's um, pencil art and I love when he shares his progress pictures because just seeing how he comes through that, I just, I love it. Thank you, JR. So again, as we keep building this and I see, I keep getting like, I, I'm noticing I keep putting my branches like higher as they're coming towards me. Like that canopy is getting higher because when we're here, you know, as we get closer to our foreground, they are starting hard, right? It, we're giving volume and we're giving depth. So that is something else that if you see like down here, they're much lower, but they're much further away. Um, you know, you ever do that where like you, you're pinching something and you can hold the sun like this, uh, or a mountain like this. So it's that absolutely that depth. I haven't tried Derwent's watercolor pencils. They have watercolor pencils. I have not tried them yet. So I have no, I love, I love Derwent products too. So. Uh, that's a great question. So when I am not recording where I am live doing like live narration, I love listening to music while I paint. Love it. Usually it is, um, classic rock. It can be anything from sixties to seventies. Uh, 80s, 90s, like I, I would just, I love music. I love music. I listen to a lot of music. Um, I listen to a lot of different types of music. Uh, I used to listen to country. I don't listen to that much anymore. Um, I really like classic rock. Some pop. Rarely ever rap. Um, so heavy metal when I was younger was like Metallica was heavy metal. And I just found that, look, I just follow, I just, I looked up at the screen and saw that I just made a line. I don't want a line. I don't, I want random. So I'm just going to kind of, and I know I'll put a tree over it and it won't be, it'll be, it'll take that away. And I'm just going to, wasn't getting quite the point on my brush that I wanted. Cool. So this kind of looks like maybe shrubbery. There we go. Put some of that in there just dappling in in a few places. Um, again, I could even like, if I wanted to show some branches, throw a few leaves on there. I can take some of these branches and decide maybe they still have a couple leaves on them. And then now, because I'm just taking my brush at this level, dappling a little bit of that in. And all I'm doing is just barely tapping, tap, tap, kind of, varying my pressure so I get different trying not to stay in the same place too long because I don't want I don't want to have um the brain will make patterns it will do it to you every darn time it it likes patterns it likes symmetry oh my gosh how often have you done that like I'm surprised that I don't have perfect symmetry in my trees here. Like I started boom, boom. You saw the spacing and I was like, I got to break this up. And then I did it again. It was like the spacing was getting similar. I was like, I have to break this up. Your brain will just do that to you. So when it comes to something like this, where I'm just going to, just going to put a few in here and there, I'm going to keep jumping around and just kind of finding a few spots that I might want a couple leaves to show up. This, this is looking fall ish to me where it's like 
the leaves have gone. I'm seeing so many branches, but I'm not seeing a lot of tree, uh, excuse me, leaves to the canopy. So there can be a few here and there. There's not going to be a ton up here, but there might be a few that show through here and there. So you just want to kind of jump around a few places and maybe pop some in. I'm not going, like, I almost just went there, but that's my lighter gray. And this is this color. So I'm trying to stick to also to where there are branches that are that color. And I don't want too much. And it's going to be easy to get carried away with that. I'm just going to do a few. And I think I'm going to stop. So there's that. Okay, let me finish because I know there was questions I still hadn't gotten to yet. All right, rinse this out. I'm going to set this down. <clears throat> okay, so question. What color did you use? I got here a bit late. Oh, so Jared, I am using the Maya gouache that Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, or Lindsay over at the Frugal Crafter gave me. For the colors, I need to look that up. These were the ones I tested out. Now this was my mix. So this was my mix of where I was, I came over and I was working on for the background for how that would, um, you know, what color I wanted, which was kind of a combination with these and some white. This is kind of like an ultramarine blue, black. This was the gray. This here looks like it could have been like a cerulean blue, but it's very desaturated. So there was my palette. So here, my white, you see, got all nasty. So they had the white. There was that one I was telling you about that is like, I think it's, I, I've been calling it desaturated cerulean blue. I do not know the actual color. This was the one, see how dark that is? But it actually looks very like ultramarine. Um, when you get it with water, the mass tone, almost black, but once we blend it out, beautiful, beautiful color. And these are very, yeah, they are very matte. So I like that. This is very matte. Uh, let me show you. I am going to, let me zoom back out now because we're, we're done with that part. Okay. So look at that. So I, I'm loving when I, especially when I zoom out, I'm like, I love the way this is looking so far. And this is not as bumpy as it was. So, uh, yes, the Maya gouache. Thank you. That is, yes. Thank you, Javi Artist, for answering that question. That is what I am using. Oh yeah. Tur Turkey Hill. We, no, I think they sell Turkey Hill here. They definitely sold it when I lived down in Virginia. Um, peanut butter. Oh, vanilla with peanut butter. That's, we used to go to one, they made their own ice cream and they called that Iditarod and it was vanilla with peanut butter swirl. That is definitely one of my favorites. And if I was having like a, like a, something with hot fudge in it, that would be one that I would definitely use for that and then have the chocolate and the peanut butter. We get hood. Sometimes we get friendlies. Um, hood ice cream is a local. Okay. So Jacqueline likes the Stadler, uh, pencils. Hey, look at that. Thanks. That's my Lou for all of you who you hear me say Lou. That's Lou. Hi Lou. Um, Let's see. Thank you. Just making sure I don't want to miss anybody. Yeah, try it. So far, I mean, so far I'm loving it. So far, I am really liking this. 
Okay, so I think I am caught up. So great, let me just show you here one more time. And I think I'm setting it right on there because it is pretty, it's already pretty dry. I'm telling you, things dry so fast in this studio. This paint is like, it's almost dry. I'll probably get this one back. Um, that blue, the black, I, I didn't even hardly use the black, so. So there they are. Oops. And I used this one. This was the black. That was that blue. Here's the white. There was the gray that I used. And if you guys saw these when I first got them, that was check out last week's live stream replay if you haven't seen it. Uh, they were cracked. They were pretty dry. I was so thrilled. And again, if, if that's something, getting these all back to looking like they do now, something that you'd like to see, drop me a comment and let me know because I will absolutely share that with you. And I'm going to see if I can pull up I am pretty sure, give me one second. I know I'm kind of looking all around everywhere but at you guys. But I'm pretty sure I have the colors so I can show you what the colors are because it was asked. Excellent. Jerry says that helps. But yeah, if you are, um, I'm seeing a bunch of, a ton of, pictures when we were fishing. Oh, the clouds. I got some cloud shots and then some rain came in and it was, wow, it was crazy. It was beautiful. Speaking of pictures, patrons will have, you'll, you will have your reference photos. I'm going to try to get those out to you tomorrow. So if you are looking for this month's reference photos, those are coming. One of which will be a lighthouse. Um, okay, here we go. Found it. Sorry guys for the delay. There. Okay. So these are the colors. Let me make this smaller so we can kind of go side by side here. So the gray, the black, and that, oh, that is, that said Prus Prussian blue. Yes, Prussian blue. So that was the blue that I used. It was Prussian blue. And then we also used, now see that one right there? That does not look like that. It's not to say it's not, it just doesn't look like that. Uh, why I cannot see it, guys. I'm trying to zoom in because I could not see. All right, Ginge. That's what it says. I would not have guessed that that's what that color was. It looks very blue. I'm sorry for shrinking and moving this down. So we use that Prussian blue. We didn't really use the black yet. We used the gray and we used the white. So there you are. But that really, really looks like if I had to mix it myself, I would say it's more of like a, it's kind of more like a cerulean blue that has been desaturated. That kind of like a Wedgwood blue or, you know, something to that effect. But I, I don't know. I don't know. So I hope that you guys enjoyed our progress we made today. We are going to finish that. My hair is like sticking out all weird. My paintbrush is in there. Uh, let me just make sure that no more, no more questions have come through. I think we're good. Yeah. So Joseph, yeah, both my moderators, Tara and Joseph, thank you both so much. Uh, I greatly appreciate everything that you do. My brain just like had a pause there. Sorry. And check out their channels. Their links are in the description below. I forgot to say that at the end of last week's stream. My apologies. I know I said it in the beginning, but I do like to say it at the end. So their links are in the description below. Please check out their channels. They're, they're great. Both of them are great. And Joseph will be live on Monday. 
at 3 p.m. Same time I am, but Monday. Most of you know that. But if you don't, come hang out because I mod over there and I'd love to chat with you over in his live stream. And Tara, who is not live streaming at this time, but she's putting out some great videos. So check out her channel as well. And uh, no live next week. And we'll be back in two weeks. But next week, I am working on having a video for you same time as I normally go live. But it's something special I'm working on. I hope that you enjoy it. If you are liking this progress and do I have a big, I know I have a big view for you. Let me go full so you can see the, there we go. If you're liking this, come on back two weeks and we will see you then. Okay. That's more full screen than we need. I'm, I'm sorry. That's just a little too much. Back it out. <laughs> but we will see you then. Thank you to the moderators. Thank you all for joining me. I am going to um, be sure and pop up another video that you're going to like right there and check that out. Thank you, everyone. New new names. It, I'm loving it. Uh, join me again next time. We're going to finish this. And I think we're going to add some, some other fun things. Maybe some little fireflies off in the distance. Who knows? Maybe we'll put some of those in now, uh, next before we put in the foreground. So that then when we come to the end, maybe we'll think about it. Let me know. Drop me a comment. What else do you want to see put in it? And uh, I will see you all next time. Keep creating. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody.